a couple of minutes here and think about business costs for RIAs too. Uh, it's you know not always talked about a ton, I don't think, with people thinking about developing or churning, adopting a rich internet application. Uh, but it's important to really weigh out. So one of the, the costs for going into a RIA is that it takes time and money to find or create a trusted technology. And what I mean by that is there are a host of RIA technologies outside of AJAX. Um, we're not going to look at them really in depth in this class. I'm just going to mention some in a, in a little bit. But trying to pick out which technology you want to actually use can be a, a little bit of a, a challenge in itself. And then also, if you've decided to go with AJAX and with um, developing AJAX, one of the, the core scripting language for AJAX is JavaScript. And JavaScript isn't like what it used to be uh, 10 years ago when you were developing web pages. Today, JavaScript is a robust language that's being used for uh, a lot of application development. So there have been a lot of libraries that have been popping up to help sort of simplify JavaScript development or extend JavaScript's functionality. So trying to pick one of those libraries can take time too. Um, the, uh, another business cost would be getting development teams up to current web standards. Uh, again, this is mainly with, uh, with AJAX development because AJAX is specific to different browsers. But um, different, it's just important to remember when doing any web programming that different browsers have different capabilities and they have rendering differences. And it's not just between browsers, but across operating systems. Something in Firefox might look the same, different between Windows or between a Mac. So it's important to try to weigh out, um, one, knowing where your audience is really coming from, what browsers they're using, and making firm decisions about what technology you're going to support. Um, are you going to support like Tier 1 browsers, Firefox, Internet Explorer, which I think cover about 90% of the market? Or are you going to take on some more, um, some other browsers like Safari and Opera uh, that cater a lot less to the market but might have more market share in your company? Also, that's uh, another topic on business costs that's similar to that is moving standards. Uh, and this would be uh, in both AJAX and in other RIAs. Um, technologies that surround RIAs are continually changing. Um, Different companies that make these, whether it be Adobe or Microsoft uh, or Sun, they're continually launching updates and, and new packages that are getting delivered and new technologies. So it's, a, you know, it's something that you have to stay on top of continually. Um, and then how these technologies are implemented can change too. As different, as different levels of scripting come out or as different updates to languages come out, um, some things might need to be changed. And then the last two things about rich Internet applications I think are, are key as you weigh out this move or adoption to, uh, to using an ARIA. The first is user expectations. Now I'd said before that user expectations, or that uh, if we can get a desktop to model, or a web application to model a desktop, um, that would be great because there would be less training. However, if you have a large, um, if you have a large base of people that are coming to your web application that are just used to pausing and waiting on websites to submitting forms and, and they don't understand AJAX or that it can be so fluid, uh, they're going to have a lot of, there's a possibility that AJAX and RIA could be too advanced for some users. Um, and then there are also some legal risks. You need to be thinking about Section 508, the Telecommun Telecommunications Act, and uh, ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Those are all important too as we consider developing RIAs and how do we develop, develop technology for people that would need assistive devices. And then the last thing is search engine optimization. It will be important to weigh out how important search engine optimization is to your company and how these different RIA technologies can actually work or hinder, work with or hinder search engine optimization. So we'll talk more about that in the future and you can maybe get a little glimpse of why search engines might not work real well, might not be able to, to optimize your site real well. Anybody have any questions about the, the business costs? All right. Okay. So as we're 
talking about rich Internet applications, I wanted us to think a little bit about what are some potential, um, some potential applications that we could develop, or some that are out there. Uh, chats are, are a big place that RIAs can be used. Collaborative office documents like uh, Google Docs, where you can put up documents and everybody in your company can sort of share a document. Uh, E-commerce, of course, is huge. Um, we have sites like Netflix and Gucci that are using um, that are using Ajax. We also have some education sites. It's a, a great tool for educational games, kind of like what you can do with Flash. You can do with other RIA technologies. Um, Mail, Gmail, Google Google Mail has been a a big push in the a, in the Ajax and the RIA industry, and uh, also mapping like Google Maps. Google Maps is what really was the first application that kind of kicked off Ajax and the web. Another important thing is searching. Um, you can use what's called Google Suggest now, or Microsoft has their own live search, which actually, as you type in words, it kind of suggests, hey, this is maybe what you're thinking about doing, and here are some hit web counts, hit counts of, of how many people are, how many searches you'll find if you use that word. Uh, and then also spell checking. Uh, you know, entering inf information, information into a little window that will kick back the results right there, right on site without having to load a whole page. So I wanted to take a second to um, just look at a couple of those sites so you could see a little bit about what, what a RIA might look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my Internet Explorer with you all. And... Uh, All right, can people see Internet Explorer? Right here, you know, I'd like to go to Hawaii. So I, uh, I just looked up Honolulu, Hawaii. And let me make that a little smaller so everybody can see that better. Now if we pop that box over, the way this is working is, again, we're trying to bring a desktop feel so that when we drag over this map, it feels to us like this, all this information about the whole world is buried right into this website. And as I'm sure most of us know, that's, that's not the way it, it really is interacting. In fact, what you might be noticing is every once in a while up here uh, where I actually have the tab for Honolulu, the Google Maps, you might notice a little refresh orb that's taking place every once in a while. What's going on is that Google Maps has kind of made a grid of the whole Earth here. And so when we look for a specific spot like Honolulu, Hawaii, it brings up a little grid. And then every time we scroll off the screen, it just brings back a little chunk of information that's kind of continually updating the map of where we're traveling to. So it's making us feel like we're really interacting with a lot more data than we actually are at the time. Another important website is Netflix. Um, this, has been a, this has been using Ajax for quite a while, and just in a simple way that you might not even realize. If you are a Netflix user, you know you can go browse a selection of, of movies. Netflix is just like Blockbuster. It's, it's an online uh, movie bank that you can download movies from, or you can uh, have them delivered to your house. But if you go to a movie, and let's say we wanted to go learn about 310 to Yuma, all you do is you scroll over it, and it brings up for you information about the movie. Um, this is this is really neat. It, it takes a little bit of information. It sends out to the server that, hey, we need information on 310 to Yuma, and it brings back a little information. And specifically, the screen then is drawn with the information that comes back. So as you'll notice, the whole page isn't refreshed, only the individual little box section or, or information that's coming back to us. 